covenless witch. It's been Agatha all along. No. It's foul and fair. She took every little bit of power I had. Gather, sister. I'm going to walk the road. Join me. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Agatha All Along, Episode 4. If I can't reach you, let my song teach you. Uh, before we get fully into spoilers, I want to say this was probably uh, stylistically a very cool episode. Like It looked very cool. It had some really interesting things. Uh, of course, big surprises after the ending of the last one. Uh, Probably not the strongest overall, but I think that I really like the structure of the show, right? We're going to have two episodes that introduced us to the show. We're going to have seemingly five different tests each episode, and then we'll have two episodes to wrap up the story because the coven of them is five. Although with uh, Miss Sharon, uh, Miss, yeah, Sharon, Miss, Miss Hart, uh, now gone, uh, the witches will need a replacement. So, we're going to get into all that. Overall, though, fun episode. I was definitely very entertained and glued to the TV to see what was going to happen next. Uh, so let's get into it. Spoilers coming up ahead. Uh, so in this episode, uh, as I mentioned, we have the fallout from the previous one where Miss Hart passed after the first test, right? Um, the Coven overall tries to do like a... Just kind of figure out what happened, right? Figure out how not to make that same error, make the same mistake. Uh, they do determine that maybe because she drank so much of the poison, uh, she only got one of the doses. Also, they didn't put her hair in the in the little concoction. Uh, so there was a lot of factors. But now they have to summon another green witch. And I think we knew what was going to happen, especially if, you, like, like, if you're like me and you keep track of all the trailers. Like you knew that Rio was going to eventually show back up. Uh, and one of the things is that we see her, although in the trailers, we see her kind of coming out of the ground, but not the way that she came out of the ground in this in this case. Uh, they do summon, they summon a green witch. Rio comes out of the grave, but it comes out like a zombie hand. And it like, it, it has a really weird, almost like stop motion effect. Have you ever seen the Jason and the Argonauts, like those skeletons, like, but like super sped up, like really quickly cuts, just like like the zombie kind of putting itself back together. Now, I've seen a little bit of uh, what people might call spoilers uh, from the some of the Funko figures. So like all that stuff's kind of rattling around in my head. I won't go into detail because because that's not really part of the show. That's not a spoiler that I want to go into details. You can do your own Googling. Um, so we end up going to the second test. Uh, and it's Alice test, right? It's a a disco house, what I'll call, because you know her mom was in a band. She she made the Witches Road song really famous. Uh, although we do learn that the version that she sang was a little bit different than the the version that they sang to open the uh, the road. Uh, so it looks like was we we try to figure out was Alice's mom trying to open the road with every concert because Alice mentions that. Her fans were her coven, uh, and and because we know that uh, her mom wanted to probably lift that family curse, that was probably her wish, her intent for going into the witch's road was to free her family from that curse so that Alice wouldn't die. Uh, there's a lot of stylistic choices. Like I said, everybody kind of goes back into this like 70s disco type of garb. Uh, very great outfits. I think they really, they make the episode really fun. Uh, I really like the locations and everything because these are all real sets and they're not really using that much CGI. Uh, I really like that. We still keep a little bit of that feeling from WandaVision that these are all kind of like, obviously it's not a sitcom, but it definitely feels very tactile. For you. It definitely feels like they're filming on a set, which is really fun. Um, so we, through through little various means, they start looking for the clue to open the thing. It's a vinyl that starts playing backwards, uh, and that's actually a curse. So they they they've all now been cursed with the same curse Alice has. So they have to defeat it. Uh, really funny that 
you know, there was this whole thing a long time ago that if you play a record, you know, certain specific records backwards, that it was a demonic voice. Um, all throughout the episode, in the meanwhile, Rio has been dropping little hints that she's a lot more sinister than she may be. She might feel uh, she Agatha kind of tricks her into like revealing that she wants the bodies of the coven. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. But obviously, this is all part of Agatha's plan to make her look bad in front of the group as well. We know they have a history and they really play that up in this episode. We'll talk about that more a little bit. Uh, so Alice's mom, we discover that the reason she made that song famous was because she was using that as a protection spell for Alice. And that's the reason that the curse didn't kill her. Uh, because when the, the other witches feel the curse on them, they start to burn, right? And Alice's mom, we know she burned in a hotel. Uh, so, like, there probably comes an age where you can't really fight the curse anymore and maybe you die. But because of the song that Alice's mom made famous, it's always being played somewhere in the world. And that acts as a protection spell for Alice. Now, it doesn't fully work because obviously her life's still kind of shit. But overall it's it what i really appreciated was the sentiment of the forethought of like alice's mom coming up with that beautiful love gesture for her daughter to protect her uh we see that teen is thrown through the glass through a glass because there's like a whole recording studio in this house uh that'll come back to to be a little bit more uh pertinent in a second and they discover that in order to get rid of this curse they have to play the song uh, the witch's road, but the version that Alice's mom made for her, so which is a little bit—I don't know exactly how it is different, but it is a little bit different. At least they mention it is. Uh, but yeah, they, so we have another musical number, which is cool. This show was definitely not advertised as a musical, but I'll take some more musical numbers from this group of very talented people. Um, I, there's a really funny part where the house starts going on fire, and Alice is playing the piano like hardcore, and there's like flames all around her, and I could just. I couldn't help but to think of that meme of that dude playing the piano on fire. So that was really funny. Uh, so after they're all done, the curse is gone. We do see like a demon show up, like a practical looking demon in a costume show up. And that was the personification of the curse. Uh, but they end up defeating it. After they get out, they realize that Teen has a, a glass, a shard of glass stuck to his abdomen. He passes out. And now they have to they have to try to figure out how to you know keep him alive. Uh, I really thought for a second that he was gonna die, uh, and then maybe come back to life or something like a zombie, something like that. Uh, but no, he doesn't. They're able to heal him. But we do see Agatha very worried about him. Like she breaks down crying while they're all trying to help her. Jen ends up having a potion or a spell to kind of help her out. Um, they. While while uh, the teen, while teen heals, uh, they sit around the fire and and he they kind of you know tell war stories of like being witches, uh, but when Agatha joins, uh, Rio tells them a story about somebody who hurt her who was a person. So that was very interesting. We know there's a big big relationship between them that we still haven't seen. Um, also. When Teen finally wakes up, Agatha tells him uh, that sigils can't be lifted, but that they are destroyed when they're no longer needed. So, I mean, obviously, that's really good for the plot because you can use that device anywhere you want. Uh, but also, we'll see how it ends up playing out like in within the story. Uh, the last thing is that Agatha and Rio step away together for a second. And because Agatha has been trying to play nice with her for the whole kind of trip a little bit kind of it's kind of back and forth but uh, Ag uh rio tells her ends up telling her that boy is in yours i don't know what that means i think there's obviously there's a theory that uh the teen is maybe a reincarnation of agatha's kid uh or something like that it's gonna be i'm sure it's gonna obviously be one of the big reveals so uh, a little bit more more clues a little bit more fuel in that fire so uh, no Mephisto this time, so Mephisto Watch continues, but uh, very excited to see where this goes from here. I really like the show. I like that the episodes are, like, nice and, like, 30, 35 minutes, uh, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where we go from here. Like I said, not overall, not the strongest episode of the this, this series so far, 
But I mean, they had some really good ones at the beginning. So I can I can hopefully expect that we'll see whose trial should be next. Uh, let me know in the comments if you if you think you know whose trial should be coming up. Uh, I think when I saw the preview that it was like a disco thing, I figured it was Alice. Um, I'm thinking Lillian probably will go next because she keeps having those outbursts of like like saying words or like kind of maybe zoning out a little bit, which they bring up in the in the show as well. So we'll see how that plays out. Overall, though, really, really fun episode. So if you've seen this, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when we go live, that is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.